Hello everybody. I know I've been saying this a lot recently, but I have an eerie story for you. I say this a lot recently because they're, they, they just kind of keep escalating, right? President Trump wants to open up the country April 12th, which is Easter. There's not a lot to say about this other than the fact that based off of the most recent data and the most recent scientific models, estimated millions of Americans will die as a result of that. That all was the Cliff Notes version and all my sources are in the description box below if you'd like to check that out. Pretty much this video is gonna be mostly on number one, what does this policy say? Or at least as much as we can draw from them. Number two, new facts about the coronavirus. And number three, what can we expect as a result based off of the different models that are available? Okay, now let's go into what the Hill had to say about this because that's where I got this information from. So here's what they say, quote, President Trump on Tuesday said he hopes to have the country's economy back up and running by Easter, Sunday, April 12th, which is what I just said. His most concrete goal to date for easing off restrictions meant to curb the spread of the coronavirus. And here's President Trump's quote referring to the United States. Quote, it's not built to shut down. Our people are full of vim and vigor and energy. They don't want to be locked in a house or an apartment in some space, Trump said during a Fox News town hall Tuesday afternoon. And here's another quote. Quote, you can destroy a country by this, by closing it down, where it literally goes from being the most prosperous, Trump said, remarking on the strength of the U.S. economy just three weeks ago before the coronavirus started to have a severe impact on the United States. He ended just there. He said that... <laughs> A country literally goes from being the most prosperous. And that was it. Like, I literally read through the article like three times. I'm like, I must be missing something. No, he just, he, he just, <laughs> he just stopped. He's like, it could go from the strongest. <laughs> that just said, maybe it's because he's president. So it's like, if he says it goes from the strongest to the, the worst. And, you know, that's, Probably not a good look, but uh, <laughs> just whatever. Anyway, enough with my my jokes here. In all seriousness, you know what would kill a country faster? Killing millions of people. Just saying. Anyway, so let's move forward with this. So what does this policy entail? Well, it is very unclear, but it looks like it's going to be some sort of a combination of social distancing and returning to work. However, many, if most, not most jobs don't pay enough to be able to, for an individual to support themselves if they were to work full time. And also a lot of the jobs are very cramped. And so they'd have to be like cutting people's hours and then having some people work and then some people not work at the same time. And so the really like the two things that we could pull from this is number one, if people were to social distance while working, number one, they wouldn't be able to support themselves. And number two, they can't collect unemployment because they're still technically working. In addition to this as well, there's this individual, his name is Larry Kudlow, Kudlow, some shit like that. Now he's the chairman of the National Economic Council, AKA this economic council that is supposed to advise presidents on economic issues. Now this fella said that the president could target regions where the virus is less prevalent and then have them work more. But I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm just gonna skip all like the BS and I'm just gonna be real with you guys personally. I think that is an overwhelmingly terrible idea. That is terrible because you have to ask yourself, why did the virus spread as much as it did in the United States? Like, let's just go ahead and ask that first. Well, the reason is because we continue with business as usual. And so some of the areas that weren't affected are now affected. And so now I have to ask Mr. Larry here, Larry, you should know this. The average person probably knows this. You could research this for a day and you could figure this out. So Larry, my question to you is why are you selling your soul here and saying that the president could do these things, even though that is literally the worst thing that you could possibly be doing. And I will prove this to you guys if you continue to watch this video. So Larry, why don't you stop accommodating presidents to save your job? And why don't you just be real with the American public as to why you think, you know, what, what you actually think. I mean, unless he's just plainly ignorant and he's ignorant about the economic impact of the virus and what we can do to save the economy, which, I mean, he could be that bad. I mean, I don't know. The head of FEMA seems to be pretty bad, so maybe this individual is as well. But anyway, I digress. You get the point here. That is a horrible idea. Now, 
To prove this point, I'm gonna look into, first of all, what does the coronavirus look like in the United States? And then let's look at two different approaches. So we're gonna look at Italy, how that's working out right now, and we're gonna look at China and how one has degressed and, degressed and one has progressed in terms of the amount of coronavirus cases. So originally when I researched this a few days ago, the US had around 46,000 confirmed cases and that was, oh, and 500 confirmed deaths. And that was according to Johns Hopkins University data. However, that was a couple days ago, looked into it now, like literally this morning. So what is it? Uh, the 25th. So March 25th, 61,062 cases. So it jumped up from 46,000 to 61,000, a little over 61,000 and 838 deaths. So since the last time I checked this data a couple days ago to now 138 more deaths. Now, a good website to go to is called Worldometer. It's just straight data about what's going on, and not only just with the coronavirus, but other things in the world as well. And I actually heard about it because there's this individual that um, follows me on Twitter. His name is Denver Westham, so shout out to him because he's the one who's like, hey, you should check out this, this um, data system. And it's legit, you can check it out. But anyway, right now what's really scary is the fact that because the US is not doing enough about the situation, we're about to surpass Italy. So let's go to Italy. Italy right now has 69,176 cases. So US 61,000, they're at 69,000. For perspective, 23 days ago, Italy only had about 2,000 cases. Now they're at almost 70 cases, 70,000, excuse me. Granted, there's more people getting tested now, so it's like how many people originally had it versus now. But nonetheless, it is spreading in Italy, and that is the problem. Also, there is 6,820 deaths. Would you like to know the death rate in Italy? Here we go. This is a good one. What do you think? 1%, 5%, um, you know, people say the common cold is like 2% or some, you know, ballpark 2%. 10%. 10%. Italy's at 10% death rate right now. Yep, they definitely didn't do enough in time, to say the least. So that's the one perspective. Now let's look at China, who's been dealing with this the most. 81,171 deaths, 3,207, or excuse me, excuse me. China has 81,171 cases. My bad. Those are cases, 3,277 deaths. So that equals a 4% death rate. So Italy's at 10%, China's at 4%. Now, as you can see from the chart too, there's a significant reduction in the amount of cases. So Italy is just dramatically increasing the amount of cases where it's almost like a quadratic, uh, a quadratic increase, where it's like quadrupling at this point, but China is not. Now, why? Well, there's a number of factors like the amount of equipment that's available, but the overarching factor was the extremeness of the quarantine in the locations that were mostly affected, like Wuhan. So with that said, Wuhan went in a full lockdown for two months. Now, the cool thing about Wuhan is that we're able to see what happened with that full lockdown. Well, fun fact for you, Wuhan is now lifting their lockdown because they have it under control so well. The hell? Wuhan was known as the, the place that all hell's breaking loose, had a lockdown. They're good to go now. Well, I mean, not good to go, but you know, they're lifting their lockdown because of the lack of severity right now. Whereas Italy is screwed. We're going the same approach as Italy right now with the lax, the laxness with the, uh, is that a word? Laxness with the regulations. That is the problem. Now, what can we project with the United States? Well, this isn't just me just forecasting with my very, uh, you know, very, very strong, powerful brain. This is actually the data that was collected. So there's an organization called covidactnow.org and it's a credible nonprofit tracking the amount of cases in the country. So it breaks it down from state by state. I would thoroughly recommend that you guys check out your own state. And what's really cool about this as well is they track potential outcomes. So for example, if you have a Wuhan style lockdown in your state, how many people are projected to die if you have a full corn or excuse me, a like a 30, a, a, like a, three month long quarantine, how that's gonna turn out, like the projected amount of deaths, and then so on and so forth. I'll break those factors down here in just a second. 
But anyway, they have something that's called a point of no return, and that's the specific date or the, the general like week that the hospitals in that state are going to run out of resources and then everybody's screwed. So the states that I really wanted to focus on are New York and California. So the potential policies that could be enacted is limited action, social distancing, shelter in place, and a three months of lockdown. Right now, New York actually passed their point of no return a little bit ago, but because of the fact that they decided to take on the shelter in place approach, they actually extended their point of no return, which is awesome. So let's break this down a little bit more. So if they had no action, that would be 388,000 deaths. Three months of social distancing, which if we followed what President Trump would like, that would be like social distancing and working, there'd be an estimated 295,000 deaths if we were to follow that policy like the president would like. Shelter in place, 38,000 deaths, which is where they're at right now. And then Wuhan style lockdown, that would only be 3,000 deaths. And of course I say only because that's still like an, a, a horrible situation, right? But ever, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna die regardless. So because the New York City, or New York, excuse me, the New York governor decided to crack down on this finally, he's likely going to save 257,000 lives because he decided to, instead of doing what President Trump would like the country to do, instead he decided to have a shelter in place policy, 257,000 lives that are gonna be saved in New York as a result. So let me ask you a question. Do you think we should open the country up based on the amount of projected people that are going to die in just New York, just New York? No, no. Now let's look at California real quick. So they also passed the point of no return, but adopted the shelter in place policy as well. So three months of social distancing like the president wants, there'd almost be 600,000 deaths. That's if we followed what President Trump would like. Shelter in place, which is what they're now doing, 11,000 deaths. So 600,000 to 11,000. Wuhan style lockdown, only around 1,000. I think we get the point here. These are literally two states out of 50. And that's almost a million people that could die if we did social distancing and working at the same time. Almost a million people that are going to die. So maybe instead of forcing everybody to go back to work so they don't you know, die from going hungry, for example, maybe we should try a different approach. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. One potential approach is to literally f have a freeze on major payments, like say student loans, and rent and not force these individuals to reimburse, for example, their landlords for the rent. And instead maybe have the government cut that check instead. That is one policy. Second policy that could go with that is the universal basic income. So people don't have to say, for example, threaten to kill all the politicians or whatever people are throwing them out there right now in order to try to get this problem fixed Universal basic income, major freeze, all major payments, don't have to reimburse them. That is how you do this. That is how you do this. But no, he wants us to go back to work with social distancing. Would you like to take a guess on the amount, and I, this is a rhetorical question, I don't have the answer. Would you like to take a guess on the amount of people who are probably gonna die in the United States? I haven't gone city to city and just generally state to state yet and try to figure out how many people are actually going to die. But I would like to know your guess. Anyway guys, food for thought.